The successful warrior is the average man with laser-like focus. Bruce Lee. My friends, your laser-like focus, it only takes 10 to 15 minutes a day. That is what we ask from you to be committed into the marketplace, following these charts, doing your practice trades, recording everything on your trade worksheets, filling out your daily market worksheet four days a week when you listen to the program, and then over the weekend, the weekly market worksheet as you listen to the weekly review and forecast. If you will do that, you will be well on your way to mastering the charts. And what does that offer for you? Untold riches. Now let's jump into these charts and figure out what's going on. Stocks up for the day. Both our stock indexes, the S&P and the NASDAQ 100. Bonds gold down. Bitcoin up. Let's jump first into the S&P 500. Price percent oscillators negative, but heading up. Derivative oscillator negative. Losing downward momentum. Big green up. Candle forming but not going to be a crossover by the end of the week. It sure doesn't look like. Let's see what's going on on the two-day chart. We can see a little bit of a slowdown. Didn't reach a higher high. Candles smaller, but again, just above that two-day trend line. So we can see the price percent oscillator heading up, derivative oscillator heading up. And this is where you see the effect of that sideways slide uh, and then things sort of bumped up a little bit in the afternoon. Not enough to cross over on the half day. Derivative oscillator still negative and gaining downward momentum. But maybe there's just a little more juice there to keep pushing things up. What you'll see a lot of times, stocks will move up and then sort of digest the move. Move up, digest the move. Move up. Took a while to digest this one. Weren't sure if it's going to roll over and go down yet. We shall continue to wait and see. But... We, we again notice that. That's what some of the nuances that you get when you pay attention to a particular stock, stock chart, uh, ETF on a daily basis. It's all about the little things because when you notice the little things, the big things don't surprise you. Now let's go on to the NASDAQ 100. What do we see there up? 1.11%. By the way, the S&P was up 0.96%. We can see two weeks of strong up movement with that price percent oscillator still negative, derivative oscillator negative, losing downward momentum on the weekly. Today, reaching a higher high, nice size candle, not like we saw in the S&P. Price percent oscillator heading up, derivative oscillator heading up in the green. And we look at the half day and we can see that again, it has been bowling up the last two days quite strongly. So we'll continue to watch and monitor derivative oscillator, price percent oscillator heading up. What is going to happen on the S&P and the NASDAQ 100? Well, only time will tell. We On both of them, the weekly is still in a down move. The two-day has crossed over going up. So one of two things will happen. Either the two-day will die roll back over and give us the opportunity for a two-day recross going down or the up movement will continue. And eventually that weekly will cross over. We'll have a weekly vertical crossover, one of the two. So we'll wait and see and let that enthusiasm, either fear or greed, let us know which way to go. What about 20-year bonds? Down for the day, 0.34%. Price percent oscillator still negative on that weekly chart. Derivative oscillator negative. A green up candle forming for the week. The first open box green up candle we have seen since all the way back in mid-September. What's up with the two-day? Well, the two-day, we have two days of up movement. You know, topping off over the last four days at about the same point. That price percent oscillator is heading up. Let's make sure we set that line in the right place. There we go. It moved a little on us. As far as the vertical line goes, that designates, of course, a two-day crossover. It's not a recross. It's going in the opposite direction of the weekly. Price percent oscillator putting away from the red signal line. Derivative oscillator heading up. What about the half day? We can see, again, a real slowdown after a day of solid, strong up movement. Little weakness in the morning, more in the afternoon, pushing through that half-day trend line. Price percent oscillator consequently getting weaker, derivative oscillator also. So 
We'll wait and see how this is going to shake out with bonds. Sort of the same thing. Either there's going to be a weekly vertical crossover going up or a two-day recross going down. We'll be standing by to act when that occurs. Now, you might say, well, what can we do in the meantime? This is what you can do in the meantime. You can wait. You wait until the charts tell you to act. That is a big lesson to learn. You cannot push a trade. You do not guess. You follow the rules. You follow the rules until they don't work anymore. And that can happen. When that happens, then you have to have new rules. But the rules we follow have worked for us for many years quite well. We will continue to follow those rules until they don't work. Let's go on to gold. Gold down just a little bit for the day, 0.02%. Nice green up candle for the week, but you notice we've not hit a higher high, and we are sitting right there on that 50 period moving average line. Price percent oscillator does look it might like it might be crossing over, going up. Might have a weekly vertical crossover on our hands. The derivative oscillator is positive. And again, a green up candle. What do we see on the two day? Well, we see on the two day that we, the first day of this latest two-day candle is a green up candle after a red open box spinning top indecision and then trying to push up again. We see the price percent oscillator heading up, derivative oscillator about flat. Now we look at the half-day chart and that's where we see where things had popped up to the most recent high back on Monday morning and then sort of rolling over going down on Tuesday morning, sliding sideways until Wednesday afternoon, popping up on Thursday and then sort of losing that on Thursday afternoon and crossing over going down on that half day, just barely. Derivative oscillator also went negative. So We'll watch, wait and see how things shape up for a potential weekly vertical crossover at the end of the day on Friday. Unless there's a huge down day tomorrow, that's probably going to happen. So mark that in your show notes. We'll also be sending out the text message that says, look for a weekly vertical crossover going up on Friday. Pay attention to that. Look at the market around 345. Make your decision as to whether or not to jump into a practice trade going up on gold. Now, let's move on. Lastly, to Bitcoin up for the day 3.84%. We can see that this week is weaker than last week, not reached that high of last week. Price percent os oscillator consequently slowing down a little bit. Derivative oscillator still gaining upward momentum. Look at the two day. You can see where it peaked on that Wednesday, Thursday candle back on the 21st, 20th and 21st, and then sort of rotating down since then. Price percent oscillator positive, but a little less than flat derivative oscillator losing upward momentum. Look at the half day. We can see where it has trundled down for many days. And then, of course, not much going on in the morning, but popping up a uh, little bit in the afternoon. So we'll continue to keep an eye on Bitcoin as to what's happening, gaining a little bit. But again, keep your eye particularly on that two-day and the weekly. So we are seeing some weakness in that two-day. And again, just pay close attention to that, that Bitcoin doesn't just blow everything off if you are still in your practice trade there. It's already penetrated, this is important, the two-day trend line. It's done that over the last three days. It is still above the weekly, but again, seeing some weakness there. Nice day, up 3.84%, but just be aware of what it's been doing and the average pace you're being shown by the Heiken Ashi candlesticks and that down movement, even though it's positive on the price percent oscillator and the derivative oscillator. That's where we are as we end the day. By the way, Patreon members, we've sent out to you your 20 weekly vertical crossovers. You can find them in your email or at our Patreon page. That is uh, for you there. It is under Patreon only access, and it is four weekly vertical crossovers going down, 16 going up, 20 all together on the S&P 500 ripe for practice trading. God bless my friends. All the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.